Good morning boys and girls. How are you? How are you doing? Uh, I hope you're fine. Uh, how is school? Are you enjoying being back in school? You know, after almost a full year of being at home. Have you, has your system gone back to waking up early in the morning? You know, I know you guys were used to waking up at 9, 10, 11, even midday, some of you. But have you? You know, how is it now waking up at 5, at 6? Are you enjoying it? I hope you are. Uh... Um, I hope you are all well. We've really been praying for you, and we are glad that you're here. We are glad that we are all well. We've been receiving reports from your parents, and that you are all well. And so let us start, even as let us pray, even as we start our lesson today. Jehovah, we thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for giving us a chance to be here to learn from your word, to hear from your word. And Jehovah, we pray that as we open up our Bibles to read your word today, that, Father, you may speak to us in a wonderful and mighty way. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. So today, I want to share with you a story that I really enjoy from the Bible, a story about a man called David. I'm sure we all know about David. We all know about David from different, you know, stories. Most famously, he is known for. What is he? What do you know David most famously for? Uh, is it killing Goliath? You know, is it killing the many people in war? Is it being a shepherd? Is it being a king? Is it being Solomon's father? You know, there are so many stories that we know. We know David for. Is it his anointing by the prophet Samuel? There are so many stories that he's known for. Is it being forgotten? You know, when the, when he, when this, when the prophet had come to anoint his brothers, and he even, they'd even forgotten about him in the field. So there are so many stories that David is known for. And today, I want to share with you one of my personal favorites. And the story that, I, that for me has a very huge lesson, and I believe that for all of us today, boys and girls, is going to have also a huge impact and a huge lesson that we can learn from for our lives. Today, I hope you have your Bibles ready. Do you have your Bibles ready? I hope you all watch these videos with your Bibles in hand, with your notebooks, ready to take down lessons from the things that we learn and we share. Open your Bible, if you have it, to 2 Samuel chapter 11. And I hope you have your Bible. You have your Bible. Here's my Bible with me. I hope you have your Bible with you too. And this is the story of David and Bathsheba. And I, uh, I don't know how many of you have heard this story. Hmm? Have you heard of Have you heard of a man called Solomon, David's David's son? Well, David Sheba is David's is Solomon's uh, mother. And so this is the story of how eventually David and Bathsheba met. And so I hope you have your Bibles together, and we are going to read through it. So Second Samuel chapter eleven it says. The following spring, at the time of the year when kings usually go to war, David sent out Joab with his officers and the Israelite army, and they defeated the Ammonites and besieged the city of Rabbah. But David himself stayed in Jerusalem. Please take note of that point. We will refer to that point later on in our story. So verse 2. One day late in the afternoon, David got up from his nap and went to the palace roof. As he walked up there, he saw a woman having a bath. She was very beautiful. So he sent a messenger to find out who she was and learned that she was Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam and the wife of Uriah the Hittite. David sent messengers to fetch her. They brought her to him and he made love to her. She had just finished her monthly ritual of purification. Then she went back home. Afterwards, she discovered that she was pregnant and sent a message to David to tell him. So David then sent a message to Joab, send me Uriah the Hittite. So Joab sent him to David. And when Uriah arrived, David asked him if Joab and the troops were well and how the fighting was going. Then he said to Uriah, go home and rest a while. Uriah left and David sent a present to his home. But Uriah did not go home. Instead, he slept at the palace with the king's guards. And when David heard that Uriah had not gone home, he asked him, You have just returned after a long absence. Why didn't you go home? And Uriah answered, The men of Israel and Judah are away at war, and the covenant box is with them. And my commander Job and his officers are camping out in the open. How could I go eat home, eat and drink and sleep with my wife? By all that sacred, I swear that I could never do such a thing. And then so David so David said, then stay the rest of the day and tomorrow I'll send you back. So Uriah stayed in Jerusalem the next, that day and the next. And David invited him to supper and made him drunk. But again that night Uriah did not go home. Instead he slept on his blanket in the palace guardroom. 
And the next morning, David wrote a letter to Joab and sent it by Uriah. He wrote, put Uriah in the front line where the fighting is heaviest, then retreat and let him be killed. So Jack, so Job, while Job uh, was besieging the city, he sent Uriah to a place where he knew the enemy was strong. The enemy troops came out of the city and fought Job's forces. Some of David's officers were killed, and so was Uriah. So boys and girls, when you read uh, on, when you continue reading the letter, uh, the continuation of that chapter and that story, eventually, you know, uh, God sent a prophet to come and rebuke David for what he had done because what he had done was wrong. And also, you know, God also intervened and the child that, you know, the Sheba had at first died and then eventually she got pregnant again and they got Solomon. But the highlight of this story for me is up to where we've read, up to chapter, up to verse 12, up to, sorry, up to verse 14, where it ends by, you know, and Uriah was killed. And when we started that, when we started this story, I told you to mark something, the end of verse 1. And let's repeat verse 1 again. And it says, The following spring, at the time of year when kings usually go to war, David sent out Joab with his officers and the Israelite army, and they defeated the Ammonites and besieged the city of Rabbah. But David himself stayed in Jerusalem. This story for me, boys and girls, is a very good example of the phrase being at the wrong place, at the wrong time, doing the wrong thing. Repeat with me. Being at the wrong place, at the wrong time, doing the wrong thing. What does verse 1 of this chapter tell us? It is at this time of year when kings usually go to war. Now, was David a king? Yes, he was a king. So where was he supposed to be? At war with other kings. So the first thing, David was in the wrong place. He was at the wrong place, sorry. The second part of the, of the things tells us that when kings go to war, what do they do? They fight. But he wasn't at war. Where was he? He was at home just sleeping. So he was in the wrong place doing the wrong thing. Those are two things. This tells us that they were going, you know, uh, he was at the wrong place. At the, he was, sorry, he was at the wrong place, which is his palace, at the wrong time, which is at the times when kings usually go to war, but David was at the palace. And the third thing, he was doing the wrong thing. Because he was not fighting. He was busy sleeping. And at the end of this story, what happens? An innocent man was killed. An innocent man's family was destroyed. An innocent man's wife was taken. Because David took Uriah's wife, which was not who was not his wife. And he ended up also killing Uriah for no reason. But apart from the fact to hide that his wife, Uriah's wife, got pregnant by David. So boys and girls, David was at the wrong place at the wrong time, doing the wrong thing. And what happened at the end of the story? Because of that, an innocent, an innocent man died, a family was broken, you know, and, and God was also angry because he eventually sent, a, later on in the story, a prophet by the name Nathan was sent to rebuke David by the Lord. And boys and girls, today I want us to take this story and the principle of that story and apply it to our lives, even as young boys, as small boys and girls. How many times have you been at the wrong place, at the wrong time, doing the wrong thing? Just think about it. Think about it. Maybe, just think about it. Maybe you're supposed to be somewhere, but you're somewhere else, you know? Maybe you're supposed to be going to school, you're sleeping. Maybe you're supposed to be doing homework, you're playing. Maybe you're supposed to be in class learning, you are there talking and laughing with your friends behind the desks. Maybe mommy and daddy have sent you to the shop, you've decided to go somewhere else and do your own thing. You know, there are so many times where even as little children, as children of the Lord, we find ourselves being at the wrong place at the wrong time, doing the wrong thing. At the wrong place, at the wrong time, doing the wrong thing. Maybe you're supposed to be in Sunday school class learning. You're at home sleeping. That's also being at the wrong place, at the wrong time, doing the wrong thing, you know? Maybe other children, there's a, maybe your parents have called all your siblings and you, you've decided not to go. Yeah, also, by doing that, you're also at the wrong place, at the wrong time, doing the wrong thing, just like David. You know, and there are so many examples we can give. Maybe other you're, maybe you're supposed to be in class learning, 
but you and your friend or even just alone you decided to sneak out and go to the field and play and also by doing that you also at the wrong place at the wrong time doing the wrong doing the wrong thing and so today we want to see what happens when you do these things you know what happens when you're supposed to be in class but you're out in the field playing your teacher will catch you and you'll be punished and your parents will be told and you'll go home and you'll also be punished you know, when your friends are learning in class and you're not in class, what happens? They will learn and they will overtake you and you'll be defeated in the exam. When your parents send you to do something and you're not doing, when you get home and maybe it was something crucial that will happen, will happen, will help the entire family and now it maybe it doesn't happen. You know, when you're supposed to be doing homework and you don't, what happens the following day in school? I'm sure we all know. When your parent tells you to do some chore, like maybe clean the house or help doing the dishes or even take out the, you know, the litter or anything in the home and you don't, what happens at the end of the day when your parent comes back home and you've not done that work? Are they happy? Are your teachers happy when you're doing what you're not supposed to be doing? Is auntie at home who, you know, is helping to take care of you happy when you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing? and you've been told and you know exactly what you should be doing are they happy no they are not and just like the lord was not happy with david you know because david he was at the wrong place say it again with me he was at the wrong place at the wrong time doing the wrong thing and when those three things happen at any one instance very bad things happen at the end for david's case an innocent man died and a family was broken for your case what happens you get punished you know, you annoy your parents, you annoy your teachers. You also fall behind on your studies. You fall behind on your homework. When, you know, even in Sunday school class, when we have classes and you're supposed to be listening and taking notes or even just listening to teacher teaching at the front and you decide not to. Are you being a good boy? No, you're not. You're making life harder for everyone. You're making life harder for your friends who are sitting next to you in Sunday school by making noise when everyone is listening to the teacher and you're disturbing them. But let us look at what would have happened if David would have chosen to be at the right place, doing the right thing, you know, at the right time, doing the right thing. If we go back to verse 1, it says, you know, and uh, I just go to the part where, and they defeated the Ammonites and besieged the city of Rabbah. So, actually, if David would have been with his soldiers, they were actually winning the war. And you know, it would have been another medal on his shoulder that this is an ad another war that he's won. And it would have been an extra thing on top of all the wars that he'd won. And he had received glory. And it, have, it, have, it would have brought many more happy things. And Uriah would still have been alive with his wife. And David would not have seen Bathsheba, you know. That family would not have been broken. And Uriah would still would not have been killed. And also for you, think of all the times when you do the right thing, when mommy and daddy have asked you to do. What happens? Your parents are happy. You get rewards. You know, you, you are not left behind on your studies. Everything is going on okay in your life. You also, you're also happy when things are going okay. Because you see, David, when he was trying to cover up, we've read that he tried to get Uriah to sleep in the temple. He tried to get him drunk. He, he tried even to send him gifts, you know. And it is because his conscience, his mind was not at peace because he was trying to cover up for the bad things that he's not, he knows he had done. And I'm sure the same thing happens with you and with me. When we've not done the good things, when we've not done the things we're supposed to do, we'll always be feeling guilty. We'll always be feeling like we need to cover up. And it should not be like that. And so boys today, boys and girls today, I want us to remember that Whenever we are at the wrong place, at the wrong time, doing the wrong thing, bad things happen. Very, very bad things happen. Very, very bad things happen. But today, the Lord is reminding us, just like when he sent the prophet Nathan to rebuke the King David later on, after he had killed Uriah. The Lord is reminding us that even as we are here today, boys and girls of St. Thomas Aquinas Sunday School, the Lord is reminding us that we need to be at the right place, at the right time, always doing the right thing. Because you can be at the right place at the right time, but doing the, the wrong thing. Just like you can be in class when everybody's in class, at the right time, when it is class time. But instead of doing the right thing, you're back there in your desk making noise or just drawing funny things in your books and your desks. No, the Lord is reminding us, even at home, at school, 
at church, when we're out playing with our friends, when we go to visit our grandparents at home, that we should always be children who are always at the right place, at the right time, doing the right thing. And so let us pray. Jehovah, we thank you for our lesson today, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your kind reminder to us as your children that, Father, we should always be at the right place, at the right time, Lord, doing the right thing. And we pray that, Jehovah, Lord, you may instill this in us in every aspect of our lives, in everything that we do. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen.